they kind of do it wrong epically, and we get to see how their interactions with one another create this chaos. You also have a very volatile and unpredictable wife at home. Rosalind is either very up or very down. She's certainly someone who is not without issues, to say the least. He doesn't love you, Rosalind. He loves me, and you know it, and I know it, and he knows it. And it might be done now, but it was beautiful, and it was real. And Stop. we loved each other. Shut up. You scare him, and you manipulate him, and you use your son. Well, he must like it on some level. He must want it because he keeps coming back for it. It's like that perfume that you love that you can't stop smelling even when there's something sour in it. You can't get enough of it. I found her struggle kind of really interesting, that concept of not wanting to be alone so much that you would rather be unhappy with somebody. Because I think our ideas of what our lives should be sometimes overwhelm what our lives actually are. We're not happy, all right? You know that I could take Danny. You know that most of your work is illegal. And you know that if you tried to divorce me, you know that I'm not saying that I would, but I'm saying that I could. And I'm saying that that is why I don't like divorce, Irving. Women do that in divorces. Women get the children and then the fathers never see them. My mother never got divorced. My grandmother never got divorced. There are no divorces in my family. I am not getting a divorce. I want the women to be as strong as the male characters, and I want them to be very powerful presences. Um, I think the whole movie elevates to an extremely rich world when the women are, are strong, extremely strong, and extremely complicated. I'm gonna do these four pasts, these four cons, to get us out of this, not just me, but us. And I'm gonna get really close with Richie, the cop, in case we need to use him if we need another move. We don't need another move. We need four busts. And we're done. We are gonna need another move, trust me. And you're gonna be thanking me. The key to people is what they believe or what they want to believe. So I want to believe that we were real. We are real. And I want to believe that a man could want me. And I'm gonna take all of that heartbreak and all of that sorrow and I am going to use it. And I'm going to make Richie think that I want him and that I like him. And I want to be very, very convincing. Maybe I do like him. Maybe I like him a lot. From the feet up, right? Baby. Carmine Polito was mayor of Camden, New Jersey, and the leader of the State Assembly of New Jersey. He's a complicated, interesting character. I spoke with senators and governors and even mayors just to see how that world works, what the shorthand of dialogue is, because it was a world that I'm so unfamiliar with. There's moral ambiguity in there, for sure. There's, you know, it's not black and white. It's, laws are black and white. People are not black and white. There's a lot of gray in there. Everything I do is for the good of the people of New Jersey. Everything I do is for them. Everybody's trying to actually make themselves better. They're just doing it wrong, <laughs> you know? I don't like that you're in jail while he's going free. I don't like any of that. I want to help you. All the razzle-dazzle that he does, it's not good. It's not real. It's fake. It's not real. Who you are is who you are between you and God. You and your soul. That's what matters. That's what counts. That's what I'm about. And that's what I see in you. Tell me you didn't feel it the first time we saw each other. Am I crazy? I don't think so. I'm not supposed to be talking like this, but I don't care. I break the rules. OK, eat it. Eat it. I want to help you. I like you. I like you. I like you. We're playing in the late 70s in a specific area of the country, the clothing, the hair, and, and none of that takes precedent over the emotional life. All right, where are you? I'm You're here. acting all scary, okay? Right, I'm are you here, here with okay, me? Yeah. I love you. It is real now. I just, I just said it. I so love the elegance of that era. The designers, Michael Wilkinson, Judy Becker, created a world that was beautiful, but real. What are you doing, going behind my back? Telling people I'm screwing up this operation? The what food? is this? What is this? You got like one in my closet or something? No. Are you dressing no. him like you dressed me? No, what are you thinking? This isn't all about what, you. What, you, you trying to dress right? me so I would look like no, him? No, you're not dressed like him. Right? I do look, I look like him.
to a costume designer, being presented characters like this is the biggest gift. It's what we all dream about. Woo! You look fantastic. I could only dream about these dresses are beautiful. Ah. Oh. What we wear reflects our personalities, our background, our aspirations, lots of subconscious kind of messages. We can help tell that story and show the arcs of the characters. You playing me? You're gonna have to decide for yourself, Kit. I just laid everything out on the table. Everyone's exterior is helping to inform their interior. Their wardrobe is part of their armor. Well, it really did help inform the confidence of Sydney. You look beautiful, by the way. Don't look at me, all right? Don't look at my legs, don't look at my hair, don't smell my hair, don't ask me how I am, don't talk to me outside of these roles, because we're done. Just stand still, get under the umbrella, come on. Just, Carmine wants Rosalind to come. I don't care. You weren't listening, I don't care if Rosalind comes. Just do your job, okay? You're nothing to me until you're everything. This film is all about human interaction, the dynamics between different personalities and exploring what physical manifestations there are of that as far as people's clothing choices and what they wear. That's what I live for, that's what I love doing. One of the things that I wanted was for her to not know how to dress for her body. Everything kind of looked a little awkward, like she never really knew how to dress herself. It was very sexy, the way the clothes fit. I think we all enjoyed wearing those suits and the platform shoes and the, the chains and the pinky rings and everything. Oh, oh the whole no, 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 right. I love also the notion that Irv is this con man who's a consummate con man, but he's doing this thing with his hair as if any of us are conned by that. You know what I mean? It's this great contradiction that happens within people. It makes such a difference. It makes you walk different. It makes you feel different. It makes your attitude different about everything. It looks so beautiful. Oh, so this is the lobby. Look at the detail. This is beautiful. Aside from Three Kings, I'd say it's the biggest in scope visually of all his movies. There's so many worlds. That's what drew me to it. It was not just all the characters, but how many worlds it traversed. We had a lot of locations. I think maybe 175, a huge amount. The use of textures and of materials was really important in the design and the decoration, and something I got very inspired by when I was researching the period. Those textures are as important as the colors to defining the characters. I want it to feel like a real world so that the audience gets lost in it. I do want them to look at Rosalind's house and think a little bit about the design and what that says about her character, but I don't want them to be doing that to the point where they're staring at a lamp in the corner and they're not looking over there where Rosalind is sitting. All right, you happy? Yes, I am happy. I want the audience to be focused on what's important, which is the story of the movie and the characters in the movie. You curl your hair in little curlers, which is, no, it's okay, you look good with it, but, you know, you have straight hair, so that's what you do to survive. You do all sorts of things, you know, we all do. Please don't talk about that. You renovate, right? This could be one of the most beautiful pieces of film that I had the privilege of collaborating on. I think that there's a lushness to the way Linus shot the film with Jeff and Greg. I think this will be the most sort of cinematic movie David's directed to date. Because we're lit for 360, 360 degrees, the camera can, can go any place, any time. It's over. I don't think so. What? What do you mean? Because when Telegio finds out what happens, you think he's going to go after me? Someone from the Bureau? Then he's gonna go after a politician? He's gonna kill you. And he's gonna go after your son. In Sydney. You never know when you're gonna be called off the bench to get right in there and try to score two points. You'll think you'll be doing Christian's coverage and then it'll turn it right around on you. So you always have to be ready. When you light a room for 360, it's, you're, you're in a play. You have to be like, ready and on. You have to bring it, man. You got to bring a lot. It's a live play. Everyone plays. A steady cam can be like a person in the room. We light through the windows with lights or natural sources or through the ceiling, so it just looks like a room. And then they can move in that environment. I like to feel their eyes. I like to not be too far removed from what they're feeling. Sometimes I think.